In this video, we're going to discuss 10 reasons why you need to use a design system when you design websites using DV5. So here is my first example. So out of the box, if you add a heading one, you get this size right here. So if I were to go to my heading text here, you can see I've got heading one selected and by default, it's set to 30 pixels. Now, as designers in 2025, 2026, we cannot use pixels. We cannot use uh, units in that manner because they are not responsive and also they're not fluid. We're supposed to be using REM. So this design system that I'm showing you has all the default values all set up for you. So all you have to do is to come over here and then choose H1. So now this is the perfect size for our headings. And not only that, this is also responsive. It's fluid and it passes accessibility tests. Next, we're going to come over here to this paragraph text. And again, just like before, you'd come over here and then choose what type of paragraph text you want to add. So in this case, we want to add just our normal paragraph text. But if you want to go with body large, you would go and choose that. But in my case right now, I want to use my normal body text. Now, do you see that if I, if I were to do it this way, in fact, this is small. Now there's also another preset for body text, which is my normal one. So all I have to do now with that selected, I just have to go in and center it. So I'm gonna go in and then center it just like the top. On the bottom here, we also have buttons. Now these buttons also have presets. So if I were to come to this button here and perhaps I want to change it into a lighter version, I, all I have to do is to come over here to the top and then I'm gonna say button uh, primary and I can decide whether I want it as an outline and just like that I've applied my preset you don't have to go in and spend so much time trying to uh, set sizes or fix things it is just done for you which is fantastic if at any point you want to change this you can go with uh, button primary and this time it could just go I mean you could just be uh, the lighter version and then I'll just do that and now it is the lighter version. So with that saved now, you just have to make sure that you have your right uh, presets here and then save. So with this now, if I were to quick do a quick preview, you'll notice that my buttons work. If I hover over them, they have a nice animation. And now my design is really taking shape and my text is fully responsive. So if I were to reduce my size look at my text there it's getting smaller and smaller and my buttons are also getting smaller and smaller and this is what uh, accessible websites look like this will pass the accessibility test just from using my design framework over here let's continue on the next reason is your spacing now by default divi gives us this basic spacing. And as you can see, this is not right. It's not correct. So if you want to use the spacing scale, all you need to do is to go into your row settings here. And then you want to come over here to content elements. And then you want to go into the column because the column is what has pretty much everything that we have here. And then all you have to do is to make sure you go into the design tab and then you want to uh, remove all the gaps like that. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is not a very good idea because how are we going to uh, make things look much, much better? Well, it's simple. All you need to do now is to go into the group settings here and then our spacing scale is right here. Look at that. We have all our sizes and all these spaces are also fluid, which means based on the screen size, they adjust their sizes proportionally. So I'm going to start with margin top medium. You see that? That's medium. And then for this one here, because these are related, I'm going to choose a different size. So I'm going to say perhaps margin top uh, small. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that looks nice. So as you can see, now we have medium and small. But if I want at any point want to change this, I can just go in and replace margin uh, top medium with large. You see that now the spacing is more intentional and this is how UI designers design websites. Now we can see that our spacing is fine there, but over here we may need to adjust this as well. So I'm going to go in spacing and then this time I'm going to say margin top um, 
extra large, okay? Because this is a totally different section. So now you see that our design is now balanced. The third reason, our sections also have sizes. So if I were to select my section over here, I can go to the top and then choose my preset because our sections cannot be the same size. So I'm gonna say medium, or I can go in and say extra large. Now, do you see how I've just added space right at the top and everything now looks really, really nice with the white space. Now, I haven't entered a specific value. I'm just clicking and choosing the right uh, values that I need. And they're not based on sizes. They're based all on clamp, which is really, really good. So here you can do all your adjustments or maybe extra large, maybe a bit too big, or perhaps you want to make it full screen. Boom. Okay, so now we need to remove this one here. And as you can see, this is now full screen. All I have to do is to go in and align my, uh, my things properly. So I'm gonna come over here and perhaps maybe center it. So now I have a full screen design. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo that because ideally I want this as, let's see, medium. Okay, so I want it as a medium section. And by the way, these paddings are also fluid, which means they get smaller and adjust based on the screen size. All right, so let's move on to, is it number four? When it comes to color, color is very, very important in design. So if I were to come here and choose my background color, all I have to do is to go to my content here. And then on the background, I have quick colors that I can apply to this. I have a light background, just like that, I've applied my light background. No need to go into the color picker and start guessing colors. So now my colors are going to be consistent. So if I were to duplicate this, uh, let's say this one here needs to be, let's say a dark background. The bottom one here is light. And at any point, if I need to change the light one here, I can just go in and remove the light background. But you see, it doesn't end there because all my colors are here. So if I wanted to add a primary background color, I can just select that and now that's my primary color. Now, let's say you decide you want to change your colors. Uh, perhaps it's a rebrand. Here's what you need to do. And this is number five, by the way. There's one central place to make all your changes. So to change your colors, you'd come over here. Let me just expand this so we can see what we're doing. So this is our primary color. So we're going to assume you've gone to, let's say a tool like Coolers and selected your colors. So let's just go into the generator here quickly. So let's say we are going to go with this now as our main color. I'm just gonna copy it. Now, if I come back and change my primary color here, I'm just gonna paste this like that, hit enter. And now you notice that it has updated pretty much across the whole website. Now, this is a huge time saver. There's one place you go in and add your primary color or your secondary color, and pretty much all your colors can be changed here, okay? And you can see we have a scale of all these colors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save and apply changes so we can see uh, how this looks. So you're probably thinking, well, did the buttons change? Well, absolutely, look at that. The buttons have changed because they were assigned a preset of primary. So I'm just gonna go back here and remove the background colors. And notice that, I mean, removing the colors is just a click away. The colors, the buttons have updated. They look really, really nice. And this applies across the whole website. So let's say you want to change these colors now because we have a darker background. All you need to do is to go in and here's something very exciting, okay? If you go into your heading text, right? Under the color here, this is the default one, but if you go on these little variables here, you notice that all your colors are here, all of them. So you can go with the primary 100. You see that? Isn't that cool? So your design now is going to be so beautiful because it's now following all the colors in our color palette. So now um, for my color here, same thing, I'm gonna go in and choose primary 100. And now everything is starting to take shape. So let's say for example here, I need to use my secondary color for my button. I can just click in here, go to the top, and then I'm gonna say secondary button. You see that? So easy.
to use. Now, this is the light, by the way, secondary button light. But if you want to change this color to something else, you can just pretty much go back in here. Perhaps you want it maybe uh, much, much lighter. If you click on this little icon, there's also more values you can change over here. Even for example, you can increase the lightness. You can see now it's getting lighter like that. Or you can make it go dark the other way. But what I usually like doing here in this case is to undo this. And then I go back in and then I just go with a very light gray like that. And now slowly, slowly, my design is taking shape. Next, when it comes to our spacing scale, and I think I'm on number six now. When it comes to our spacing scale, if I click in here, I can now go in and add padding all around my design. So for example, I can go in here and say padding small. Now I know you may have not seen the change that has happened, but now if I were to go to my background, I can apply the background that I want on this design. So I can just click in here and notice this is another way of seeing all my colors. I can see my colors when I hover over it here. It tells me what color it is, which is brilliant. So let's say I want to go with my secondary color 100. Look at that. I've literally added padding, which is really nice. Very, very easy to, uh, I mean, to to see but what i want to do now is to further design this and this is how you're supposed to be designing your website so first of all let's just add an image here so it looks nicer so i'm going to select my image upload my image in here okay so the next thing i need to do now remember we have our heading text and our text over here so what i want to do now is to map everything according to our design system so for our title text i know i'm on h4 so if i were to set this to h4 it may be a bit too big so i can just come over here and say five heading five heading five and boom that's the perfect size if i need to change my colors this is where i'll change my colors i'll just come over here and then choose the color i want but in this case i'm gonna leave it as it is now let's go to the body text so if i again come over here to in fact let's get rid of this if i come over here to the body text there is body text, which is on normal size. And for this case, it is too big. We can't, we can't use that. So instead of spending so much time trying to go in and uh, choosing whether you need to use uh, 12 pixels or 9 pixels or M's or... No, you don't need to do that because everything is done for you. We would come over here and then I'm going to go with body text small. Okay, now that's my perfect size. Now, it doesn't end here. We also have rounded corners and our rounded corners are not random. Our rounded corners are based on a, on our design system. So in order for us to add our rounded corners, I'm going to go into this actual item here and then we're going to go to border. Okay. Now look at this. We have radius zero, which is what it's on. And then we have radius X to small, radius small and so on. So let's try small. Look at that. So that's my radius small. And if I go to my image, because you might be thinking, well, maybe this only works on the uh, on uh, just the outer item. No, it works everywhere. Rounded corners pretty much follow our design. So now you can see that everything looks really, really nice. At any point, if I need to change my background here, I can just go in, go to my content. And then over here on the background, I can just refresh this and then add my background color. So perhaps I want to go with something like that. In fact, that's a bit too light. I can just go in, refresh that, and go with gray 100. So just like that, I've gone in and I've designed my layout. So at this stage, you're probably thinking, but Mac, what about the gaps in between here? How do we adjust that? Again, there is a system that controls all the gaps. So if I go in and select my rows, and then on my elements here, I choose my column, I can now go to design and then in my layout, look at this. We have gap extra small. Do you see that? We can even have gap zero if you wanted to. I'll just come over here and add gap zero and there's no gaps. But what makes it really exciting is all these gaps. I'm going to go with, let's try small, maybe even medium. How about medium? So these are the decisions you're making while you're looking at your design and it is it is an amazing experience now designing with, with the design framework.
So as you can see, it is very, very easy to go in and uh, do all our layouts. So, so if I wanted, I can just add the fourth one there and my design is balanced. It has a, a grid system that it's working with and it is very, very easy for us to use this as we're designing our websites. At any point, if we decide, you know what, we want to change the branding, there's one place you go. You'd come over here, go to uh, your colors and then this is where you change all your colors. And if you change one color, all these other colors here also update. We also have error colors, success, warning. These are called semantic colors. You don't have to guess these colors because there are stages where you're going to have pages which have uh, perhaps errors or you want to show the user that they use the wrong password or they're not a member. Or you can use all those semantic colors to just make your website easier to understand and easier to manage. So as you can see, throughout this demo here, I did not go in and add a specific value or a specific unit because there are so many units to choose from. So for example, if I were to go into my paragraph text here and let's say I go over here to my sizing. So you'll notice that for my text size, there is percentage, M's, RAMs, VW, VH, VMAX. I mean, which one would you use, especially if you are a beginner? Now forget being a beginner. As someone who's been using Divi for over 10 years, I still don't even know what the VH, VW percentage, blah, 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 when to use it, why it's even there. Of course, there is a reason why it's there, but where to use it? It's just too much technical jargon, which you don't need. All we need is to design layouts that look beautiful like this. Balanced designs, they, I mean, the, the sizing, the spacing is perfect. This is how we need to be designing websites moving forward using a design framework. Now, I know, you may be saying, well, Mac, you're saying all this because you're selling your design framework. Yes, absolutely. And this is the only way that I could see is the best way to design websites with DV5. The workflow from DV4 is totally, I mean, we can't even think of using that workflow because DV was very, very limited. Now we have superpowers. We can design amazing looking websites now. And this is the proper way of designing websites. Now, my design framework is going for $77. And there's also a bonus because I'm also giving you a starter template, which has your headers, your footers, your 404 page, your search results page, your archive pages, your blog page. I mean, it pretty much has everything that you need, saving you hours and hours and hours of you setting up all these every time you build a brand new website. So this is going to save you a lot of time. And not only that, you're going to have websites that look very, very clean, very, very neat. I mean, this is how US designers actually design. And not only that, I'm going to be supporting this. I mean, if you're not following me, we are on version 1.5. 1. Uh, 1. We started off from version 1.0. Uh, there's a few updates that uh, Divi did, which I had to go into uh, the framework and update it. And now, it is working pretty much uh, very good. We're also, we're also still waiting for Elegant Themes to squash out all the bugs. And very soon, we're going to have this design system, which is so powerful that you're going to be designing websites that look really amazing using Divi 5. Now, if you're brand new, you've purchased Divi, right? And you have no idea where you are. It's very confusing. And you, and you really want to use uh, Divi to get started. There is a course here that I created called the DV5 Mastery Course. Now, this course has so far 44 lessons. It has over a thousand students, a thousand and fourteen to be more precise. This course is going to help you get up and running super fast with DV. And guess what? It is only twenty-seven dollars. Twenty-seven dollars. Now, of course, you know DV is still in development. It's still in beta. As they're adding new features and new updates. I am also going to be adding all those lessons onto the DV5 Mastery course at no extra charge. This is the best way to master DV from the get-go. No more time you know, spent going to YouTube, trying to find out you know, documentation and how to do things. It's very frustrating. This is a central place where you can just come in and just learn how things grow. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.